You are listening and watching to a very special podcast. Here we have more on, of course, Maggie Wolf. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you. Maggie Wolf had no idea what she was in. But when she woke up, she felt like she was in water. But when she touched it, she realized it was some sort of manifestation blood. But somehow, something about it was just so calming to her nerves. What is this? She thought. Oh, Brie, it wasn't a dream. She thought back about Crowley and the other vampires and his touch. She cringed. Oh my god, that wasn't a dream. That's when she began to cry. Just slightly, but she managed to calm herself down. Finally, what she was in began to evaporate, and Red Death was standing over her. You! Hey, Red Death greeted. Sorry about that. You... you saved my life. How did you... I have my ways. Um, anyway, um... Perhaps I can help you out with something. Yeah, I... <clears throat> well... <clears throat> I have to tell you, I can't tell you how much I can thank you. Uh, with nothing. Hey, are you concerned about your friends? Red Death asked. You mean the ones that were just here a few minutes ago? Yeah, a few moments ago. Why? No, I'm just wondering. I was talking about your gang. Oh, that... Are they okay? I can smell something more wicked. This way comes. Something more disturbing, he said. I believe Sabretooth is coming under fire. What? Sabretooth? Who would be after Sabretooth? Remember the Grand Magic Games? Oh, come on, that was in the past. <sighs> I heard once that you think you're done with the past, but sometimes the past... But sometimes the past isn't done with you. <gasps> oh my god. Exactly. Come on, Red Death said. So they hurried off. Meanwhile, BV and the others were looking for Maggie. Yoichi pointed out, Um, this is where he told me to meet. He sent me a message. I was surprised he managed to get me here so quick. You sure this isn't a trap? BV asked. I'm positive, Yoichi said. Please, I, I was just... I know, I know. Don't worry. I was just making sure. Lecter and Frost seem a little scared. Hey, remember this Ophelia you mentioned? Uh, yeah? Yoichi said to Lecter. Lecter just looked around. He looked left, he looked right. I, um, I mentioned this to Sting. Yeah, and I mentioned this to Rogue, but I don't think they believed us. But I think they must have seen it. However, Yoichi assured them, Oh, don't worry, she does exist. I believe I saw her daughters before. <laughs> But however, when he was talking, he noticed Sting and Rogue look a bit tense. Earlier before, Sting and Rogue managed to figure out about this Ophelia. It came through in a book. It started off like a fairy tale about how a princess, or rather a peasant girl who became a princess, but then she was publicly humiliated, and now she wrecks havoc. 
as a supernatural being. Not like a ghost, but something more menacing. Very much more wicked. At first, Sting and Rogue just thought it was just a stupid book. But by the name of Princess Ophelia suddenly catched on. Poor Lecter and Froche were freaking out, see, saying they seen images of Ophelia standing over their bed, sometimes coming out of the closet, or sometimes Ophelia would just be scaring them so much that Lecter and Froche would be found somewhere. Sting and Rogue managed to notice that somehow Ophelia is trying to torment them by scaring their poor egg seeds. And also some other things, such as when they were ripping up the storybook and just tearing it to shreds, somehow it got revived over and over back together. They were looking through it and there were new words in there. It was a message from Ophelia that said, You boys really are a pest. You've been a pest since the Grand Magic Games. So I'm gonna make a deal with you, a bet. The more you deny me, the stronger I get. The more you resist, the more I get to make a bad influence. And she drawn out pictures, one of what looked like Rogue in some sort of possessed state and he was strangling poor Froche wanting to break his neck off. Sting was horrified to see an image of himself under some possessed and suddenly breaking the neck of Lecter so much in such a brutal manner. They looked over and saw more images in the book. Something that looked like Sting and Rogue taking down everyone in their path. And then the last image showed of them two in a more execution style. Finally having enough Sting and Rogue actually burned it away with the help of Natsu who managed to realize what was going on. They were tormented by hallucinations such as Lecter and his lifeless body. Sting looked like he was gonna freak out when he saw this. However, Lecter, the real one, was still alive, but he was panicking and standing on top of something high of the furniture. And Sting looked down, realizing that he was holding some sort of object in his hand, a rather sharp object. He had no idea how it got there in his hand. The same thing happened with Rogue. He looked over to see some sort of projection was playing out. And it was of four girls just dancing and prancing about. Them just holding hands while in a circle. And spinning around happily. Before a woman appeared with flowers in her hair. No shoes on her feet. And also rather a bit of dancing as well. More like twirl dancing and some ballet movements. However, her flowers became wilted. And then she was, they were all surrounding a young boy who just was looking like he was in the fetal position and the woman was comforting the boy. But then when the woman looked at the screen, she looked like she was staring into Rogue's eyes, as if into his soul. But no matter what, Sting and Rogue did not want to believe that this Ophelia woman existed. And they were still being troubled by this figure of their imagination. 
and Lecter always could not sleep. He would always come to Sting screaming, saying, Sting! It's there! It's there! What is? Sting said. Ophelia! Sting rolled his eyes. Oh, no. No. Lecter, this princess does not exist. However, the same thing happened with Froche. When Rogue found Froche under the bed, Froche was in a field position and his eyes were widened and teary-eyed. Rogue pulled him out as Froche was saying, Don't let her in! Don't let her in! She's gonna kill you! She's gonna kill us all! I don't want to die! She said she was gonna hurt you! Rogue! But now they were starting to see how crazy everything was becoming. Now presently, Red Death had led them into some place, but however, Lecter and Frosch had to ask, um, where are we going? We're just, um, walking for a little while. However, you can now notice something. Wait, what's that shadow? That's when Lecter and Frosch grip onto Yoichi's head for dear life. <laughs> it's Rosemary! Frosch cried out. See? See? She's there! She's there! She's there! Lecter protested. That's when Sting looked like he was about to lose it. Lecter! Why can't you just see it? There is no freaking Ophelia character, nor there is a Rosemary. However, Frosch all of a sudden got quiet. And that's when he managed to speak out. What do you want? Rogue said. Rogue! Stop this! What's going on? Get away! Get away! Please! Frosch said. That's when Lecter and Frosch screamed. They were pressing on down to Yoichi's head. Yoichi was confused. Uh, uh, hey, what's going on with you guys? got really worse, but then they saw a shadow, and it looked larger 